This is called an oblique collision. The balls do not hit directly head on, but rather slightly off center and then move off at angles. The incident ball here, M1, is the one that is moving initially with velocity V1. And it has a momentum and hits the target ball, M2, initially at rest. The momentum before is very easy to find. It's simply M1 V1 because M2 is at rest. They hit, they move off at angles. Each has a different angle, theta 1, theta 2. Each has the, its own unique momentum, P1 and P2. Momentum is a vector. And we can add these two vectors head to tail. So we can bring P2 up and put the tail of P2 on the head of P1 and find the sum of these two vectors after the collision. And notice if I bring the momentum before over, the momentum after P1 plus P2 head to tail equals this momentum uh, before the collision. Now there are two ways of approaching problems like this. Here's the first of the two methods. Method one uses the law of the cosines and the law of the sines. You've seen this before, you know it from math, but let's review this. Side C, angle a, C, side A, angle A, side B, and then of course angle B is the opposite. The law of the cosines says C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. And the law of the sines, quite easy actually, A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. Now you may have to hit pause just to go over these to make sure you remember them. Now let's apply them to this diagram, but first, that was theta 1, where P1 uh, went off, and if you remember, P2, let's bring that down, went off at angle theta 2 right there. By geometry, we know that theta 2 will also be up in that corner, and then if that's theta 2, so is that. Now you may need to hit pause just to confirm those in your mind. Now how do we apply the law of the cosines to this. Let's take a look. The law of the cosines. We'll call this side C, we'll call this side A, and this side B. Therefore, we can write PB squared, that's the C squared, that's the momentum before then, equals P1 squared plus P2 squared minus, and we want 2AB, which then would be 2 times the P1 times the P2, and it was cos C, which in this case would be cos theta. And this can become very useful for us to solve uh, for unknowns when we have a momentum diagram like this. And these are the angles, of course. Now let's take a look at how we would solve using and the law of the sines and how that would help us. So the law of the sines, again, that's side C, there's angle C, there's side A, we'll call that angle A, and there's side B, and we'll call that angle B. So we write down then, um, C over sine C would be PB over sine theta, A over sine A would be P1, divided by sine, notice, theta 1 there, and P2 over sine B, or sine theta 1. So study this and uh, understand the relationships, and you can use this to solve problems of oblique collisions.